Hello and welcome to The Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is The Valley Business Today, Front Royal Warren County edition. So I am on the screen with Nikki Foster from the Front Royal Warren County Chamber of Commerce, fresh off of what can only be described as the most magnificent Christmas parade in the Shenandoah Valley. This is what I've heard and what I've seen on Facebook, Nikki Foster. How glad are you, A, that it's over and B, proud that you had a record-breaking Christmas crowd attend the Christmas parade this past weekend. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't really happy that it's over because (laughs) it is a lot of work, but I am also really proud and thankful for the way that it turned out. It was an absolutely lovely day. The crowd was bigger than it's ever been. We had terrific vendors, terrific volunteers. Everything was wonderful. I can't say any more than that. I was a little worried in the couple of days leading up to when I was watching the weather and they kept talking about not so much rain because that kind of disappeared from the forecast the closer we got to the date, but they were talking about winds and gusts Mm -hmm. of 35 to 40 (laughs) miles an hour. And I thought, oh, I think rain would even be better than wind in the middle of a parade, but I don't (sighs) think we even got those winds. We did have a little bit of that. And it, and those winds came at the most inopportune moment as well. So it was when our merry market vendors were trying to set up. (laughs) <laughs> so we did a lot of like holding tents down. We did a lot of chasing products across the parking lot, those sorts of things as folks were setting up. So there was a little bit of difficulty with that, but thankfully that kind of passed quickly. We didn't lose any tents. We didn't sustain a whole lot of damage with product. And that's good because there were some really fantastic vendors at the event as well. All in all with the weather, It was better than we expected because we were expecting the rain in the morning through early afternoon. And most of that rain was there early morning before anybody set up. And then we even had the sun peak out quite a bit during the day. The temperature was mild. So we were very fortunate. Now, how many entries did you end up with? When I talked to you last (laughs) week, you were at 80 plus And your goal, because you said this last month on the show, your goal was that last year's crowd was the biggest crowd you'd ever had, and it was the most entries you'd ever had. And your goal for this year's parade was to beat that record. Did you? Oh, yeah. (laughs) We absolutely did. So we had about 120 pieces in the parade. It was large. It was a long parade. And the crowd, again, the crowd was, there aren't really any words to describe how large the crowd was. We're super fortunate that we have such a beautiful place in Maine and Chester Streets that we can hold a parade with all of the wonderful lights and decorations. Just the backdrop of Main Street itself is terrific for the parade. Then having those wide sidewalks where people can stand, there's a lot of great infrastructure there that makes it possible for us to be able to host a really large number of people to watch the parade. So yeah, it was big and a lineup was when you've got that many people and that many entries that you're trying to get lined up, it can get a little chaotic. So I will say it is chaotic. And I absolutely know that I owe my lineup volunteers. I'm not sure what I owe them, but I owe them something big. Herb was on the coffee break with us Friday morning. We didn't see Jim Martin, but it would have been nice to have seen them Friday morning and then see them again this Friday and how much more gray their hair was (laughs) just from managing the lineup. (laughs) I would say in the grand scheme of things, while all of our volunteers work really hard and they're all valuable, I would say that lineup volunteers probably work the hardest because that is absolutely (laughs) the most stressful job. To that point, Janet, since we're talking about it, I I think it's hard for those of us who aren't planning the event, right? Those of us who are just going to events, we don't necessarily know about all of that stuff that goes on in the background to make things happen. So again, I just want to give a huge shout out to all of my volunteers who did a terrific job and anybody else out there who's planning events and you've got volunteers, kudos to you because it's definitely not easy. And I encourage people who attend events that are as large as something like a Christmas parade or a parade any other time of the year, 4th of July, any of those kinds of things, or even going to a small open house or holiday event, find the person that is putting that together, whether it's the business owner or an event planner, and just tell them thank you and tell them what a good job it was and that you appreciate it because that goes a really long way to just making them, because the whole time, even through the event, 
all, and I know you because you're very much like me in that you're probably going, oh my gosh, this didn't happen. Oh my gosh, yes. this went wrong. All you're doing during the event is looking at the things that need to be fixed or changed. Sure. You don't really get a chance to just stand for a minute and look at how awesome everything is. So having somebody come up to you and tell you that is huge in the middle of one of those kinds of events. That's a super good point. And you can identify that person because they are the person who has the biggest bags and dark circles under their eyes <laughs> because I didn't sleep for three nights before the Christmas parade with all of those thoughts on things, you know, things that need to be done or those sorts of things. And you're right. It's really difficult. Well, it was a wonderful parade. And I had somebody tell me in the middle of the parade, because, you know, I was talking about other things that I was concerned about, either things that needed to happen or hadn't happened, whatever. And the person said, look at all of these people. They have no idea that those things that you're concerned about need to be done or weren't done. So just enjoy it for a second. It's hard to do that, but we wouldn't have events if people didn't come out to them. Thank you to all of the people who stood out in the cold and I hope created a core memory with their family. And it's not over. The Christmas parade is over. <laughs> Merry Market is over. The bulk of what you at the chamber have to do for the holidays physically is over, <laughs> but business after hours is just around the corner. So holiday things are continuing. You've got a Christmas movie. Rick is doing his free Christmas movies at Royal Cinemas. Oh yeah. Things will continue. There are Santa visits all over the community. There are so many things, uh, holiday parties, all of that sort of stuff. But you know, I definitely want to highlight Royal Cinemas because Rick does this every year. He does the free Christmas classics on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. He puts a full schedule of Christmas movies out there and gives them to the community community free at no charge. Jeans Jewelers and Tana Hoffman with Sega Real Estate, they're sponsoring those again this year, but they've also added for the movies, the first 35 kids that come in get free kid combos. So they get popcorn and a drink. It's just this awesome, this awesome community program that again, it's, it provides a sense of community and community has been on my mind a lot lately, thinking about what it means to each person, how we can create more opportunities for people to spend time together and get to know one another and just feed off of each other and share ideas and opportunities and coming to something as simple as a Christmas movie and sitting with a whole bunch of people that you might not ever sit with. That's community. I would encourage folks to go to Royal Cinemas, either to their Facebook page or to their website and get all the details about the free Christmas classics and go to one because they're so much fun. I know we're going to talk about cookies and conversation that is a follow-up to the Civic Pride Workshop that you did a few months ago. But one of the uh -huh. things that we learned at that Civic Pride Workshop is it isn't always about us adults. So when you're taking right. your kids to see something that they've probably only ever seen on a television screen, which even if you have a big 60 inch TV still is not the same as going to the theater. I've never seen some of those movies on the big screen. Right. Yeah. That creates community for these children at a young age. It gives them that foundation of appreciating the community that they live in and creating those memories. So they want to stay here or they want to come back here. So it checks so many boxes for parents, for the community as a whole. And I think Rick is just amazing for doing this year after year. Oh, I, I agree. Absolutely. And you're right. It, it definitely creates that sense of community. And for anybody who has been to Royal Cinemas, they'll recognize what I'm about to talk to you. For those of you who haven't, it's a whole nother reason for you to go. Rick has those commercials specific to the theater in the beginning that Miranda Pictures has produced for him. And there's one that's about this father and son who go into the movie theater. This father has been going to the movies since he was a kid. And so it flashes back to all of these memories of the first time he went with his dad and the first time he took a girlfriend, and his wife and his kids, all of that sort of stuff. So for those of us who've been here in Front Royal and Warren County for most of our lives, we have that as well because that theater has been there forever. It's a piece of our history. I have a ton of memories through the decades of my life of spending time in that community place. That's what it's about. And I think to harken back to Jeff again with Revitalizer Die, communityness is one of his five points of pride, right? So doing things like that, spending time together, coming out into the community and just enjoying something. And it's not just the free Christmas movies because he does an adult movie in a yeah. in association with the business after hours. <laughs> this year he has chosen Love Actually, which I understand is one of his favorite movies. 
It is one of his favorite movies. So last year he let me pick, and I picked, of course, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation because it's my favorite. This year he picked one of his favorites, which is Love Actually. And it's a great movie. I'm looking forward to seeing it on the big screen. So Business After Hours, hosted by Royal Cinemas, is happening on December 13th, Tuesday, December 13th. We start at 5.30. We're done around 7, and then Love Actually will start right after that. So it's open and free to the public. So I encourage folks to come join us that evening and watch Love Actually and get all those warm Christmas spirit feelings that we all like to have this time of the year. We also, of course, for our business after hours or December business after hours, we always collect donations for the Warren County Department of Social Services foster care program. So I encourage people to consider donating to that cause. And just a reminder, we say it every year, Janet, because I think the people often think, oh, the state pays for that program and they do. But what this fund, what we donate this to is the fund that they have to do things like buy senior pictures for these kids, field trips, all of those things that the state does not allow money to go towards. Yeah, the state pays for their basic needs, the roof over their head, the clothes on their back, the heat, the water, their food. Yes. It doesn't pay for all of the things that we know kids need in order to grow up and to be successful and confident in their adult lives. Hopefully we'll raise some more money for them this year. You know, we normally average between twenty five and twenty five hundred and three thousand dollars in our donations. So we're hoping to see that again this year. We want a Christmas parade version of donation <laughs> for the Warren oh, County Foster Care Program. Yeah. And I will, before we go to break, Rick and I got into this animated conversation <laughs> is what I'll call it last year about Die Hard being a Christmas movie. That's the topic when the holidays get here. Mm-hmm. And somebody had tweeted something about whether or not it was a Christmas movie. I retweeted it and said that it was not. Andrew, the station owner, then replies to my tweet arguing with me, Dr. Fight, who is a regular on the show, tweeted back and said that he too believes that it is a Christmas movie. There will not be a Valley Today show technically on the radio on the 23rd. The Uh Friday, the 23rd and Monday, the following Monday, we are off for the holidays. But I am going to do a special podcast edition with Andrew. I'm going to see if Jeff can join us, if Dr. Fight can join us. And we're going to have another one of those spirited conversations about whether Die Hard is actually a Christmas movie. And it'll be released on that Friday. So mark your calendars to find the podcast that day. Because, you know, I'm going to win against both of those guys, no matter (laughs) what they think. That is quite the debate. And I, I don't know how we ever get a true answer who's going to make the decision right who do we ask bruce willis does he tell us who I makes may that have to final? send bruce willis a tweet i may have to tweet at bruce willis and ask who makes him. that final determination i feel like it's bruce willis i think he should tell us i think that may be right of course now as andrew's listening to the show on the air on wednesday afternoon he's probably googling it right now to see if he can find where bruce willis at some point has weighed in <laughs> on that and he'll bring that with him in his prep for the podcast that day. Right, yeah. (laughs) Let's take a break. When we come back, I want to talk some more about Cookies and Conversation, about the Civic Pride Workshop, because you've done a follow-up get-together. And then that kind of leads into the last thing I want to make sure we touch on before we wrap up for today, which is shopping local. So can we do that in the next segment? Certainly, absolutely. We are on the screen today with Nikki Foster. She is president of the Front Royal Warren County Chamber of Commerce. It is the Valley Business today. We're going to come back and talk Civic Pride and shopping local in the next segment in just a couple of minutes. Hello everyone, my name is Olivia Webster, a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor's School, and we're partnering with the local environmental nonprofit, Sustainability Matters, to help you help yourself while helping the planet. Here's your sustainability tip for the day. Did you know that cutting the time of your shower by five minutes can save up to 25 gallons of water? That's a lot of water that can instead go to the native plants in your garden. Also, during the hotter months, consider taking a cooler shower since using cooler water uses less energy, thus reducing your carbon footprint. Finally, something you can do to save water and money is to install a rain barrel. Rain barrels collect rainwater from your roof and provide you with free water to use for your plants. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor's School and Sustainability Matters, reminding you that together we can keep the river clean and the valley green.
Welcome back to The Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is The Valley Business. Today we are on the screen with Nikki Foster, president of the Front Royal Warren County Chamber of Commerce. In the first segment, we sang the praises of the Christmas parade, which was fantastic. If you missed it, mark your calendars for next year. It's always the first Saturday in December. The time, though, I understand, Nikki, might go back to 4 o'clock or maybe even be a little bit earlier because it is really dark at 5 and 6 Yeah, it, it was dark. It was very dark. And I like being able to see the lights and stuff. I do think that from an organizer standpoint, I'm going to be a little more comfortable if it's at least pushed back to four o'clock, just because I think it is a little too dark for the number of entries we have in the parade and the crowd size and stuff like that. But that'll be a conversation we'll continue to have. But yeah, I think five o'clock might've been a little too late. (laughs) And we learn that every time. The first year I ever planned that Christmas parade, the first thing, the the thing that I learned the first year is don't put the Girl Scouts behind the horses. (laughs) Who well, would have guessed? That. It didn't even occur to me. <laughs> Not right. a horse there's person that. didn't even think about it. So we all learn <laughs> every single year. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> so let's talk for a minute about the cookies and conversation. Before we jump into that, which was the follow-up get together that you had for the Civic Pride Workshop, can you remind people about the Civic Pride Workshop, what it was, who came and why it was something the chamber did? Sure. So I, for, oh gosh, probably Four or five years now, I've been following an organization called Revitalize or Die on social media and then through their blog posts and website and stuff. And Jeff Sigler, who is the founder of Revitalize or Die and has another company called Proud Places, he talks about community and he talks about how important it is for us to create places that our community members are proud of. Because if we're proud of where we live and the places that surround us, we're more likely, number one, to utilize those places, and number two, to take care of them and to encourage other people to spend time in our places. I had wanted for quite some time to bring Jeff to town, and it just felt like we were at that time, right? Like where it was the right time to bring him here. So we brought him in to do a Civic Pride workshop. Civic Pride is talking about the big things and the little things. The little things as simple as if you see a piece of trash on the sidewalk, it's okay to be mad that somebody dropped that piece of trash on the sidewalk. We can all be mad about that. But we should also, while we're mad, we should pick it up and throw it in the (laughs) trash. Even though it's not our job, we should be proud enough of our community that we don't want that laying on the street. And then the bigger things like, what do we want to do with blighted structures? Maybe we have too many of one sort of business and talking about those. So the little conversations and the big conversations. And so Jeff came in, gave his presentation. We had a really nice turnout. We had it at Royal Cinemas. We had uh, about 120 people who attended. It wasn't a one-off. It's not one of those things where we're just going to bring Jeff to town. He's going to talk his talk, and then we're not going to do anything beyond that. So we're having a series of conversations. We're trying to do that every six weeks or so to continue to talk about the things, the issues that we see in the community, things we can do to improve some of the issues so that we see that are here. And then maybe, again, it's about that community stuff, just bringing the community together to be able to have conversations and to know one another, because that's another piece of the puzzle. The more we know one another Again, the more proud we are of the people that we know live in our community. You're right. A lot of places they bring in these speakers and they get everybody motivated and passionate about whatever the topic is they're talking about. And then the event is over. The speaker goes back to wherever he's from and nothing changes. And after a couple of weeks, even the excitement from him having been here dies Mm -hmm. down and goes away. But you need to have things like these cookies and conversation and these follow-up get-togethers so that people can talk about what can we do? Because sometimes it's not a big thing that everybody has to do. It is little things. It's Mm -hmm. a, a bunch of people coming together and doing something little that makes a big impact Sometimes it's going to town council meetings. It's going to your board of supervisors meetings and expressing your opinion on a particular item. There's a lot of things that you can do that I think people don't realize is an option for them. Oh, no, you're a hundred percent right. I have had someone in a meeting or I run into somebody who says to me, oh, I remember when Jeff said this at that meeting, because I know that he's left a mark, right? And people listened and people are taking action. And there's folks who are applying to serve on vacancies on the planning commission and all of those sorts of things. That's where it all starts, right? It, you start to make changes in your community when you start being more aware of the opportunities where you can 
serve. And so you said something about town council board of supervisors meetings, but really all starts there, quite honestly. And it's gotten so easy for us to keep up with town council and board of supervisors and what they're doing because they're recording their meetings now. They're making it really easy for us to know what they're doing, which is great. I applaud them for doing that. So even if you can't go to their meeting or you don't want to go and sit for a couple of hours at the government center or whatever, you can log on to either one of their websites and you can do the same thing that I do. And you can listen to what they're talking about in the background while you're working, but you're informed. And the most important thing is that we're all informed about what is happening in our community, because I am 100 percent certain that if every single one of us were informed, then our ability to make change is that much greater. And they release the agendas for those meetings in advance. They don't just suddenly type them up and print them the day or the night of <laughs> their meetings. Those agendas are out there. So you can at least go look at those and scan them to see if maybe there is something on there that you want to know more about or that you have a very passionate opinion about that may make you want to go sit in that meeting and watch it unfold before you. But you're right. Being informed, you and I have preached that about how local elections are the most important elections, that the presidential elections and the Senate elections and the House elections, they get all of this coverage and all of this news space. But it's these town councils and city councils and supervisor spots, school board spots that really are the thing that shapes our individual communities that we have the most say over. Oh, absolutely. Those people who are serving in those offices touch your life every single day. The folks who serve in Senate and Congress and those sorts of things, those are important. Absolutely, they're important. But those people aren't touching you every single day, but your local officials are. And so it's really important that you know what they're working on, what they're doing, and just be informed. And when I say be informed, I don't mean that post that you read on Facebook tells you what they're doing, because I can assure you that's not the case. So we all, obviously we all have our opinions and just because someone has an opinion and they share it on social media, doesn't mean that's actually what's going on. No, it's not a fact. There is a difference between <laughs> facts and opinions. Yeah. And we all know opinions are like something else that we all have. <laughs> facts, however, are what they are, which right. are facts. <laughs> right. And it's, it's important that we all do our own research and come to our own conclusions. Because if you start at a place where you're just getting your research based on what somebody else thinks. That's how we get into half of the problems we do is that somebody has spread some sort of misinformation and then it spreads like wildfire. And then the original source is never what is actually going on. Yeah, And the other thing that helps build community aside from just doing the little things and being involved and informed in your local elections is supporting your local businesses and your local shops. We <laughs> hear a lot about that this time of year because uh -huh. it's the holidays and a lot of us are in shopping mode. I quite frankly, am in shopping mode all year round. <laughs> I don't necessarily need a Christmas holiday to make right. me want to go somewhere and buy something. But these small business owners, the businesses on Main Street, the businesses on Royal Plaza, the businesses that are peppered across Front Royal Warren County, they are the backbone of this community. And supporting them now more than ever is really, really important. Absolutely. Because you have to think about it from the perspective of more of your tax dollars stay in your community when you're supporting a local business. There's jobs, there's all of these things that make it important that you shop local when you can. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't shop at the large retailers and that sort of stuff, because we all do. But at the same time, you also have to give consideration to all of these local businesses that are operating in your community. They're your neighbors, they're your friends, they're the people that your kids go to school with. And whenever you can, shopping locally is, is not only is it important, but man, it's fun because there's some <laughs> really cool things that you can get in the local shops. Right. You never know what you're going to find. You think you know until you walk <laughs> right. in the door and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know they had this or I didn't know. Because uh -huh. that's the other cool thing about small business owners is they are able to move inventory. They are able to swap out how their stores look when you go in. They are able to add new things, get rid of old things. They have really good sales when they want to get rid of 
old things, yeah. they really have the ability to change on a dime that mm -hmm. you're not going to see the Walmarts and the Targets of the world be able to do. And things as simple as restaurant gift cards for the local, your local restaurants. Those make great gifts, right? The meaderies and the breweries and all of those sorts of things. This time of the year, of course, because we're buying tons of gifts for people. And I would much rather somebody give me a gift card to a local restaurant or brewery or winery or any of that stuff, then just something that I'm going to sit on a shelf and not use. The same for me. Although I would like that gift to say, here's the gift card for you, but will you take me with you? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's a win-win for both. <laughs> right, right. So before we wrap up, tell me again, when is Business After Hours? Tuesday, December 13th. Business After Hours begins at 5.30. We'll be done around 7.00. And then Love Actually will start after that. Ideally, it's chamber members. But if you want to check out the chamber, this is a really good opportunity oh, sure. to be able to come and do that. Absolutely. We would welcome folks as guests to come see what we're all about and what we're doing and experience a little bit of our community. And bring a couple of 20s or your checkbook so you can donate to the <laughs> Warren County Foster yes. Children Program. Please, please do. Thank you for meeting up with me today and having a conversation. I'm glad the Christmas parade was such a huge hit. And now you've got six, seven months before you have to think about it again. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I've actually already started thinking about it. Thank you, Janet. I will be back tomorrow. It is Laurel Ridge Community College Day, so I will be on the screen having a conversation with Guy Curtis. Meet me back here for that just a few minutes after noon.